Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, so, yeah, as I said, I'm going to be talking about some joint work I'm doing with my supervisor um, on uh, looking at the, there's a standard problem in economics, the common prior problem, which I'll talk about, um, of which basically all the work previously that's been done has been done on situations where you assume full support of priors. You assume that people put positive probability on each possible state, and I'm looking at situations where that's not necessarily the case. So, sort of extending, just trying to extend existing results. Uh, so most of the work, the sort of the broad framework, uh, a bit similar to what Matthew talked about yesterday, is we talk about there's just some set of states of the world. We call this set omega, but it doesn't really matter. Um, there's some set of states of the world. Each state of the world is a sort of considered to be a full representation of, of the world. Uh, in the normal sort of scenario, we talk about each player has some, each, or there is some prior beliefs over the set of the world. And so there's sort of before the fact beliefs, and then we receive some sort of private information which we represent through partitions, which again, I'll talk about, uh, which is some private information, uh, and then through a process of Bayesian updating, we produce posteriors about the world. And this is situations of incomplete information. Um, and so this is all sort of a pretty standard setup. And so this is the example we're going to be working with basically the entire day, I mean, basically the entire talk. Uh, really nice, simple example. We have a set of states of the world, and there are six states of the world, A through F, and we can think about partitions. So we have a red player here, and the red player here has this partition, and what this partition means is that they receive some sort of signal, and their signal they receive tells them either the state is A or C, or the state is E or F, or the state is B or D. But they don't get any extra, any extra information from that. They can't tell the difference between E and F, they can't tell the difference between B and D. They have no way to tell that. This is a example partition. We can also think about the green player who has this kind of partition over their state space. This is a different partition. This person, if they receive this signal here, they know for sure the state is F, but otherwise there's still elements of uncertainty. But you know, there's possibilities of these things being, but there's the possibility that you know for sure, but not necessarily. And so what I'm gonna be working with is sort of, in some sense, the reverse question which is supposing that we don't know what priors are, we only observe each player's posteriors. So we observe each player's <coughs> after the fact um, information, what they know after they get their private information. And we want to be thinking then about which priors are consistent with these observed posteriors. And in particular, what we're really going to be interested in is, uh, is it possible that there's some sort of prior that's consistent with every player's posteriors? So each player get, we see each player's posteriors, could that possibly be coming from some sort of prior? Um, there's very strong results if, it, if that is the case. And so we look at our example, and I just plop down some posteriors here. Uh, the red numbers in red are for the red player. So here we see in this partition here, if the red player receives the signal that they're in this partition, they think A happens with probability a half, they think C happens with probability a half. Right? If the green player is informed they're in F, they think they're in F with probability one, perhaps not surprisingly. Um, if the green player receives information, they're in this partition here, that they know the state is either C, D, or E, then they think it's C with probability 30%, D with probability 70%, and E with probability zero. Right? We allow um, posteriors to be zero here, and priors as well to be zero. And so we can, you know, if these are the posteriors, we can think about priors that could have possibly generated these posteriors. And here are some examples of priors that could have generated these posteriors. Right? It could be that the red player, it's mu is a prior, it could be that the red player thinks each state, before the fact, thought each state was equally likely. Right? If they thought each state was equally likely, they receive information that actually they're in this one, a, this state A or C, this element here, A or C, and they work out that, well, A and C were equally likely, so I should put them as equally likely in posteriors. Similarly, for the rest of these. Um, but they might not have thought that, right? This set of um, priors here, this is also consistent. Uh, it could be the case that player, the red player was absolutely certain, absolutely certain that states A and C were not going to be true. That the state of the world was not A and was not C, before the fact. And then they got their private information. They received information that actually the state was A or C. They were just, they were mistaken. And so they put down some sort of posteriors here. These posteriors are still considered to be consistent with these priors. Right? The thing that happened was something totally unexpected. 
And we have similar sorts of things here for the green player. Um, it's just that these, these priors, if we apply them on these sort of, on these um, partitions, are consistent with the posteriors. All we need is consistency. Uh, we can put zeros on things. It's not, not an issue. And now I want to sort of move, now this graph here is fine, but it's not super nice, so let's get rid of a lot of extraneous lines and make this much neater. All I've done here is if they were part of the same partition, I've drawn lines between them of the appropriate color. And now it looks like a nice little graph here. You can build this as a formal graph, but it's just a nice little graph with colored lines. It's lovely. I think it's lovely. <coughs> and with this graph, we can now do nice graph things. We can talk about paths. We can talk about cycles. So we can talk about a path which goes from A along the red line to C and then along the green line to E. This is a path. We talk about a path that goes from F along the red line to E. We talk about cycles. And so cycles behave as you'd expect cycles to behave. It's any sort of closed path from A down to B, B across to D, D up to C, C back to A is a, clo is a closed path. We call this thing a cycle. Um, we talk about minus C as the cycle in the reverse direction. So C went this way and minus C goes this way. We're going to use these notions. But it's just normal notions of cycles and paths. And then the sort of the trick of this is we put values on these paths and values on these cycles. We just assign some function that is the value. And so if we think about the path that goes from A to C to E, right, it goes from A to C along the red line. And so we pick up the endpoint. We pick up this red point 0.5, this red point 0.5. And then we go from C to E along the green line. And so we pick up this green zero. And so it's 0.5 times 0, which is 0. This is the value of this path. This is how we work out values for paths, and also for cycles as well. If we think about this um, path from F to E, we go from F to E, we pick up this red 0.5, and that's the end of the path, and so that's the entire value of the path. We can talk about values of cycles. We go from A down to B along the green, get this 0.5, along the red, pick up this 0.5, up the green, pick up this 0.3, and this 0.5, and we get 0.5. 0.375, apparently. Calculate. Yep. What do you do if there's multiple? You could have both colors on the same uh, link? Yes, the color that you choose matters. So, so you just pick one? You pick one, yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll depend. So um, if, if there was a red link here, let's say, if there was a red link here, then the path that goes from A along the green to B is different to the path that goes from A to B along the red line. So the color of mine matters, certainly, yeah. Um, and proofs it becomes actually very important, but yeah, it matters. Uh, and we see that the value of this part, the value of this cycle, the direction we take matters, right? Because we're taking the posterior at the endpoint only, the direction matters. Or direction might matter, I should say. These are the values. And now we've got all this sort of the stuff. Now we can actually talk about some some results that we get out of this. Uh, so if we talk about omega naught as the set of states where some player has a zero posterior, where some player says, I'm putting posterior zero on that, then we can say that any state with that property, any state that someone said has zero posterior, has to have zero prior. Any prior that exists, any common prior that exists, uh, has to be zero at that state. This is the sort of the simplest one. Uh, if green, ha green has a posterior of zero at E, right? Green puts zero posterior here. And so any common prior has to be zero at E. This is hopefully reasonably clear why this has to be the case, right? If, if they had a positive, po uh, positive prior, they would have a positive posterior immediately. And so there's not, sort of not much here. Uh, the next one, which I think is the novel one that I feel, I feel like people didn't think about. I feel like this, is, this question's been ignored because people thought that this, that, yeah, that this was the only thing to think about. Um, but it's, it's not. There's this extra thing we have to worry about as well which is we talk about positive paths. So a path is positive if the value of the path is positive, not surprisingly, perhaps. <coughs> and we let omega sub p be the set of states with some positive path to one of, these, one of these zero posteriors. So I can draw a positive path to one of these zero posteriors. Then the common prior there has to also be zero. Common prior, if I can draw a positive path from my state omega to something I worked out earlier, was had prior zero, so what this limit here says. If I can draw a, a positive path from my state omega to some state that I know has zero prior, then omega has to also have zero prior. 
So for example, in this example here, we, we saw this path from F to E along the red line, had a positive value, was a positive path, and so we, our, our lemma says that F, the prior F has to also be zero. If there is a prior F, it's also zero. And this is hopefully not too bad as well. We already worked out that the prior E had to be zero. And we know from these 0.5s here that the red player considers E and F equally likely. In prior terms, in posterior terms, but also in prior terms, uh, the red player considers E and F equally likely, and so they have to consider F, prior F has to be zero. And to get this in general, you sort of take a inductive line along the positive paths um, to get the result in the more general framework. And the very last one. Yep, sorry. So, okay, the, the, given the posterior of E is zero and C and D is positive, you're, um, you're, you're taking the fact that you know, the information only can reach possibility in that set, meaning that the prior, the prior of E must have been zero. Yep. But in moving from your sets to this graph, yep. Oh. Exactly. Uh, it depends. You normally draw the complete graph here, so it, it is still, I mean, yes, it's still unique. Why? why? I'm just thinking of the possibility that there could, well, I mean, the C and D could be part of an information set without E as well. It could, but it wouldn't be E's information set. It wouldn't, sorry, be Green's information set. It would be someone else's. No, so greens, green, green can only receive the signal that they're in either, either A or B, or C, D, or E, or F. They, they only so, get one okay, signal. Okay, so you're restricting it so that none of these things are overlapping. Yeah, yeah, no, no you can't have overlapping yeah, stuff. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, cool, yeah. Um, you can, yeah, this is partitional information sets. You, you can build it where they do overlap, but it's different, yeah, <laughs> different results. Yeah, yeah. Um, where are we? Yes. And so the last one, as I said, is uh, we worry about these cycles, and so we talk about a cycle being inconsistent if the value of the cycle in one direction is different to the value of the cycle in the, in the opposite direction. Um, and this is the last problem, right? The last problem is, this is the last thing that can be a problem, which is that if some state is part of some inconsistent cycle, if there's some state that's part of some inconsistent cycle, then any prior has to be zero there as well. Um, and I'm, not, I'm going to prove at least one direction of this, or I'm going to prove part of this. Um, and so we see here, you know, I've done the work earlier, um, if we do, if we think about the cycle that goes this way, we get a value of 0 0.0375, cycling this way, value is 0 0.0875, and so these points A, B, C, and D are part of some sort of incon some inconsistent cycle, and so if there is some common prior, it's going to have to be zero at, at all of these points as well. Um, and so this model here, this is a simple sort of example model, um, we've sort of seen through the three things we looked at that any prior has to be zero at every one of our states. And that's just not possible, right? Even allow, <laughs> because it's a prior, um, even allowing sort of prior to be zero somewhere, that's not enough here. We still get a situation where this is, there's no possible prior here. Certainly there's no possible strictly positive prior, that's, that's, we already know that from existing results, but this kind of model here, it goes a bit further and says we have no priors even in, even in any sort of other result, even allowing zeros. Um, and I'll generalize this statement in one second, but first I want to just quickly mention part of this lemma, because I can do part of this lemma graphically. So this lemma says that if, the, if, if we're part of some inconsistent cycle, then any prior has to be zero everywhere on that cycle. And so I can prove part of this at least, just very, very quickly. Um, suppose we have some sort of inconsistent cycle here. Suppose this cycle is inconsistent. And suppose there's some point, let's call it C, where the prior is zero, because, you know, suppose there's one point. To show that there is a one point requires a bit more work, but supposing there is a one point that's zero, then I have some path here, A, B, C, right? Path from A to C. I have some other path going this way from A to C. If both these values were zero, then the cycle would be consistent because the cycle would be the value of the cycle would be zero in both directions. But so one of the at least one of these things is positive, and, the, and it's not because it's inconsistent. At least one of these values here is positive, 
one of these directions, at least one of these paths is positive. And so it's a positive path to a zero prior. And so A has to also be prior zero from one of our previous lemmas. And so is the motivating thing for one of the for part of this result at least. So I wanted to do motivating reasons for some of the result. In any case, we get to the main theorem, which sort of generalizes or sort of gives the actual statement of the fact we showed earlier, which is that if we call this omega y the set of points that aren't one of those three problems we talked about earlier, then a common prior exists if and only if there's something that's not something out something that's say in this omega y. There's at least some points left over after we've made all of the points in here have zero prior. If there's anything left over, we can put some weight on those and we can get a prior if and only if this set, uh, this set here is not empty. And so we can get a prior sometimes, exactly when this happens. Uh, and in this case, there's a common prior with support of this, of this set here, and this is the largest possible support. This is the unique maximal support uh, for any sort of common prior in this problem. And I'm not going to prove this. Most of this has been done through the three lemmata, or one direction of this is done through the three lemmata we showed earlier. The other direction is uh, my co-authors earlier, some is modifications on my co-authors earlier work. But it's mostly these three, these three lemmas. Um, we also get a nice sort of, this is the main theorem, I guess. We also get a nice little one-way proposition in the other direction uh, as well, which says that if all cycles are consistent, then there must be a common prior. This is something that sort of comes out if you do a bit of work. You can say that if the cycles are all consistent, then there has to necessarily be a common prior as well, which is a different additional statement, um, but relies very, very heavily, obviously, on the previous theorem. <coughs> and that's it, really. That's all I've got. Don't want to prove anything. Thanks. Thanks. Any questions? Shocking. It's sort of something's gone wrong with your post, your, either your posterior information set. Something's happened that's a bit weird. But, well, I don't necessarily like to say it like that. Um, you get very, very strong results. If there is a common prior, then you get very, very strong things like you can't possibly trade. Um, so you get no trade results if there is a common prior. So kind of non-existence of common priors means you can, you necessarily can do things like um, arbitrage. Um, if you think about this as a trading as a as a trading problem, you can get arbitrage. You can definitely get arbitrage happening. Um, so there's those sorts of things happening, I guess. Sorry. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we don't. I mean, it's not a question I've asked or thought about, really. Um, there is something. There is some minor result you can get for that, which is. Or so there is some result you can get in that direction, which is, um, if you have more links on the graph. So if you have if you have more links on the graph, then you're more likely to have problems with getting a common prior. So ideally, you want people to have more information. Reduces the chance of there being problems in a certain sense. Um, but beyond that, I don't really know. Yeah. More link yeah. More links are bad, and so more refined information is makes it less likely to have problems. Any other questions? Easy. Thank you very much. Thank you.